All right, guys, welcome to my water jet, uh, DIY water jet cutter update video. So in this video, uh, I'm gonna talk about the current state of the DIY water jet and uh, what is left to finish before uh, completing the project or first cuts, I guess you could say. So here's the water jet. This is July, as I explained in uh, the first time that I talked about this. The last time I talked about this was uh, 2018. Uh, specifically was the first and last time I talked about it. So this is a Julyer 400 to 1 compression uh, dual action so it pumps forward pumps forward and backward that's why it's got the two that's why it's got two ports on it and it's 400 to 1 so what that means is when you put in 400 psi uh, sorry you put in uh, 60 psi through the water uh, airline right there it's going to do 24,000 psi right so it's going to multiply it by 400 times now, um, this guy is a pneumatic pump, so you use wa uh, use air. So I have a compressor inside the garage that is set. Right now, my regulator is broken, so right now it's at 120 maxed out, basically, and it can do uh, 120 times 400, whatever that compression is. Now, what happens is that this guy will uh, pump 400 times that pressure, but uh, there's a couple caveats that. Uh, do some interesting things with it that I'm also going to be talking about. So how do I have this set up? Because it's a dual action, there are two inlet ports, one inlet port here, one inlet port here. These are both, um, what are these, uh, quarter inch. These are both a uh, quarter inch MPT and I have them to half inch barbs and I'm running uh, some braided nylon half inch ID tubing. So the half inch ID tubing goes to the half inch barbs and then I have a half inch T to go from one line. And then right here, as you can see over here in the corner, I have it attached to a hose, which is attached to main utilities line, which is generally 60 to 80 PSI. So we're gonna get an extra 60 to 80 PSI. I'm not sure if that compounds on top of the 400 times. So I'm not sure if we get an extra 32,000 PSI from that, I'll have to do the math to figure that out. Or if it's just an offset. So if you are times the 60, if you times the 60 here by 400, and you times the 60 by 400, and then you just add the 80. I'll have to run the um, the calcs on it. And we'll talk a little bit about how this pump works in a second. Now I'm still waiting on a couple things over here on the ends. So this side and this side, I'm waiting on a couple more parts in order to complete the entire system. Now uh, I also have a another hose that uh, I'll show. I'll make this into a two part, part one and part two. Uh, I have another hose that uh, goes there that has a flexible line. So that's a polyamide tube with a quarter inch ID and the polyamide is to keep it from exploding at this operating pressure. This operating pressure that I'm going to run this guy at is 24,000 psi. So it has extra braids of stainless steel. I think it's like three braids of stainless steel mesh that goes around the polyamide tube to keep it from expanding and, expose, and basically rupturing and then shooting high pressure water everywhere. Then that guy goes up to my cutting head, which is a um, it's a hypotherm uh, A2 cutting head, and it has a 5 thousandths orifice, uh, ruby orifice on the top, and a 20 thousandths mixing tube. Now generally the rule of thumb, even on uh, um, the A2 cutting heads documentation, usually the rule of thumb is three times the orifice size. So eventually I'll have a 15 thousandths uh, tube made and those tubes are tungsten carbide which is a standard cutting material so I'll have uh, one uh, custom tungsten carbide mixing tube that is 300 thousandths or 0.3 inches in diameter and I think it's two inches long or something two or three I think three inches long with the 15 thousandths hole cut in it and then I'll be uh, running perfect and then for that they recommend anywhere between 120 140 to 220 mesh garnet so Usually most water jets, they run 60 mesh garnet, 80 mesh garnet, uh, up to 80 mesh garnet. So usually I'm going to be going way higher, so theoretic, uh, way finer uh, green size. So theoretically I'll have a very nice hairline cut. So let's talk about some of the other things that I have here before I start up. So let me go grab those really quick from the garage. Okay, so let me talk to you guys a little bit more 
about how this system works. So what happens is in order to do the high pressure side, which is 24,000 PSI, and all my parts are gonna be rated up to 60,000 PSI. Obviously on this side, it's not that big of a deal. The biggest pressure that I'm working with is the 60 to 80 PSI here, and this is 100, up to 120 PSI. So that's no problem there, all very low pressure stuff. You could use brass and stainless steel fittings and even plastic fittings you can use over here, no problem. Now on the high pressure side, you need to use uh, stuff that is higher pressure and usually the scheme that they use is called cone and thread. And the funny thing is actually the parts are extremely cheap. Originally I thought I had to get, uh, I was gonna save money to have them custom machined, but actually off the shelf, they are very cheap. And so here I got some custom parts made from Hylock which is a company that I was talking to, and they're, they're gonna have a full suite of solutions that I'm gonna need for this project uh, later on. And you can buy this stuff from Parker, uh, High Pressure Equipment, HP, uh, HPE, I guess, High Pressure Equipment, um, Swage Lock, all kinds of companies sell this kind of stuff. And so generally you have the variances in the nipple size. So you have a quarter inch nipple, you have a 3 eighths nipple, and you have an eighth inch nipple. And I think those are mainly the the, um, the ones that you have to pick from. And so that's how you pick the different ones and also how they lock, what type of uh, cone and thread they have in order to seal. So these parts just came in yesterday. This is the cross. So this is what's gonna go down there on the high pressure end and I'm gonna have one high pressure nipple come in from that outlet right there. And I'm gonna have another high pressure nipple come from that outlet there. Both of those are M14 by one and a half and unfortunately that's a non-common, this is again a custom Chinese pump that was made for me in China. And from Julyr, J-U-L-Y-R, J-U-L-Y-R, Julyr. Um, custom uh, pump made in China and so they're using metric and metric is pretty uncommon here. These are uh, 9 sixteenths by 18 thread which is pretty standard. And then if you go to the higher, uh, if you go to the higher one of these nipples then generally that's when these guys increase in thread diameter. So um, I'm gonna have two nipples come out of here. I'm gonna have to make some quarter, uh, some custom M14 by one, uh, by one and a half uh, glands. These are glands. And so all you do with these, is I'll show you in a second, you just cut a pocket inside of these and then the collar fits in there. And so these two, I have a high pressure nipple come out of here and go into my cross, and a high pressure nipple come out of here and come into my cross here. So these two sides of the cross. And so I need to bend this into a 90 degree angle. Now the issue is it's very thick wall, so I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm gonna do that. Then out the top here, I'm gonna take this out and then my flexible tubing goes in here and goes up to the water jet cutting head. And then down here, I'm either gonna have a high pressure transducer or a pressure gauge, probably at first a pressure gauge. High pressure transducer is anywhere up to $3,000. And that's more than the entire budget of this project. So right now, I do not have either. The pressure, high pressure gauge has about $500. So I'll put a plug. I bought a plug in here that just plugs this up and so it doesn't leak. And so now I'm gonna have the nipple come in here, nipple come in here. And so now it's combining the two inputs. Step by. Now it's combining the two inputs into one output and goes up to my hose and goes inside of my, um, inside of my cutting head. Let me go ahead and show you how this works. And again, this is from Hylock. Thank you guys, this just came in yesterday, so great to shoot a video. All right, so you see here, this guy's called the collar and you can see that the end of the nipple is threaded. Now the end of the nipple is threaded with a left hand thread, and I believe it is, uh, should be quarter 20. Should be quarter 20 left hand thread because it's a quarter inch nipple. And then inside this gland, you'll see that it has basically a socket in there. And inside of the socket, this gland just goes in there and presses in. And what's pretty nice is it actually looks like their gland is tapered. So I could just use a regular drill to do that. So that's pretty cool. So it's just a regular taper here, and then it goes in here, and as you can see, it presses against that, and then you thread this into the hole, and then on the inside there, you can see that it has a chamfered uh, hole on the inside, just like it has a chamfered here. And so what it does is it just creates a mechanical seal. This guy goes in here and slams shut, as you can see there. And then this collar, so this is a collar here, this is a collar, and this is a gland, Sorry, this is the collar, this is a gland. And the gland grabs over the collar, 
grabs the collar and then shoves it into that chamfer. Now you have to adjust the collar so that when you bottom out the gland in the bottom of the thread it actually tightens. So you see here I need to adjust, right? So you come over here and you turn it backwards and then you are good to go. So this is the main components that I was running for and unfortunately I did not know that these are just off the shelf. So uh, that would have obviously saved me a lot of time. But now I have enough time to work on this project because this COVID thing and all that stuff. So what else do I need? I need those custom uh, M14 by one and a half glands, these guys, the glands that go in there and that they grab these collets. I bought some uh, these collars. I grabbed some extra collars, so I just need those. Then I need a custom 7 8 18 that goes into my cutting head. And then I need a custom nipple, which I'm going to make a custom elbow because the the uh, you saw how this is a female hole in here and this is male. On the cutting head, it is male taper. It has a male taper. And so the female actually needs a female taper on it. So I'm just going to make a custom 90 so I could put something on top and it doesn't hit. Uh, if I could put some machine over the water jet and it won't hit it. So I could have a low clearance and maybe when I build my mill, I could put my mill over the water jet and have clearance to do so. All right, so let's go ahead and run this and I'll also show you guys my flexible hose. 